Now, one of the great things about Photoshop is that there's no shortage of keyboard shortcuts available to you to help streamline your workflow. And it's going to be different for every person in terms of the things that you do on a regular basis, the way you approach image manipulation, the kind of shooting you do, etc., etc. All of those things go into defining for you the keyboard shortcuts that you're going to use. Now, I'm going to show you the ones that I use on a regular basis. And keep in mind, this is by no means a comprehensive list. In fact, I'm the guy that could probably stand to benefit by looking at more keyboard shortcuts but I think I have enough and you know I do what I do and my relationship with Photoshop is uh, sufficiently fulfilling <laughs> to to just leave well enough alone I I'm uh been using Photoshop for 12 years and I do what I do and you're going to do the same thing you're going to develop your own way of doing things and, and that's as it should be so from the very beginning and not in any particular order of importance. If I'm looking at an image like this and I immediately want to go to 100% zoom, I hit control one and I just did it and it doesn't do anything. And if that happens to you, simply bring the cursor over to the image, click on it and that activates it. It means it chooses it and then it will work. And then to go back to fit in the workspace, control zero. So control one to zoom in, Control 0 to zoom out. Now let's go back to Control 1, and as I want to move around the image to look at different areas, hold down the space bar, left click, and drag it around. Now when you hold down the space bar, no matter where you are on these tools, it will always revert to the move tool or the hand tool. I guess it's the hand tool. So hold down the space bar, left click, hold it down, and you can drag it around the image. Now you can also throw the image like this. Okay, so you've seen that. That's kind of a cool thing to do. So there's zooming in and zooming out and moving around on the image. So let's go ahead and go back to Control Zero. Now the other thing that I do that I know you've heard me say a million times is Control J on the PC, Command J on the Mac. I'm starting to say that in my sleep now, I do believe, but that gives you copy layers very, very quickly. Also, if I have the paintbrush and I come over to the workspace, I can enlarge the brush with the right bracket key or I can reduce the size with the right or the left bracket key. Let's get it right. Now, if I'm working on a long, complicated project and I don't want to lose my work, I hit Control S every now and then to save the image in whatever state of process it happens to be in. That way I don't lose it. Now, the other thing I use quite a bit is on a PC, you hold down the Alt key and then push the mouse, if you're using a mouse, push the mouse away from you to zoom in, pull it towards you or spin it towards you to move out. I use that quite a bit. Very, very quick. On a Mac, it's the Option key. Same thing. Now, if keyboard shortcuts is your thing, and believe me, I know people who just live and die for keyboard shortcuts. I'm not one of those people, but there are a couple of places where I'm going to go ahead and establish some keyboard shortcuts. I use the Saturation Slider, Color Balance, and the Black and White dialog box all the time, and I probably should use a keyboard shortcut to access those areas. So let's take a look at how that's done. If you want to build your own shortcuts or find out a comprehensive list for all the shortcuts that are available. We'll come up to Edit and drop all the way down to Keyboard Shortcuts and we see this dialog box that comes up. And this is the wonderful world of keyboard shortcuts. So let's click on Image and let's scroll down. And we get to the Adjustments area. So here we have Hue and Saturation, which already has Control-U assigned to it. Color Balance has Control-B assigned to it. And look at Black and White. Alt plus Shift plus Control plus B. Who's going to contort their hand in order to hit all of those keyboards? I don't think too many people. Anyway, I want to reassign Hue and Saturation to F1. Now I'm going to hit the F1 key, but look what happens. It tells me there's a conflict and that F1 is already in use as a keyboard shortcut. And it will be removed from Help, Photoshop Help, if accepted. I come up here, I click on Accept, and I now have the ability to bring up the Hue and Saturation slider simply by hitting F1. Let's look at Color Balance. I'm going to hit F2 for that. And F2 is already in use and will be removed from Edit, Edit, cut if accepted. Well, I don't have a problem with that, so I'm going to go ahead and change it. Black and white, click on it, I want F3. F3 is already in use and be removed from edit, edit. So, no problem. 
that's the way I want it to be. That's the way it's going to be. So I hit accept. And now when I hit OK and I hit F1, look what comes up. I hit F1 again and it stays there. So I do have to cancel it the real way. F2 and there's the color balance. F3 and there's the black and white dialog box. How easy is that? Now, I just converted myself. I now have keyboard shortcuts that I'm going to use from now on, thanks to this course, to bring up the three areas that I use quite a bit. And you can do the same thing, and you should do the same thing. And, just, and as you start doing things over and over and over, these keyboard shortcuts are going to mean a lot. So there you have it. Keyboard shortcuts really will help you streamline your processing in Photoshop CS6.